Last Friday, we had one of our patients come into the emergency department who was really short of breath. He was wheezing and overall in a lot of respiratory distress. And whenever someone's in respiratory distress, it usually means that they don't have oxygen, enough oxygen. So what we did was give him oxygen. We thought, hey man, he needs oxygen, give him oxygen. But a few minutes later, he actually started having a seizure. And we thought, well, how could this be? And then that led me to think about something. There's this phenomenon called oxygen-induced CO2 retention in people who have obstructive disorders such as COPD. And in fact, this patient actually did have something called COPD, chronic obstructive pulmonary disorder. So this is along the same lines as asthma, but asthma is reversible. Um, COPD is not. Once you have it, you're unfortunately stuck with it. What it is, is an obstruction of your lungs. So the lung lining itself isn't damaged, but the fact that you have a lot of air in your lungs and you can't get it out. Your lungs are essentially obstructed in some way. Some parts of your lung are normal, but many of your alveoli where your blood gas exchange happens are basically gone. They're useless. You can't get air out, so you can't get air in, so it's a very bad situation. So you'd think oxygen would help in this case, wouldn't it? And yes, it should, but it really depends on how much oxygen you give. You see, I have to take you back in terms of how the physiology works for someone who has COPD. Because you have this chronic problem with your lungs, some parts of your lung are fine, some parts of your lung are not. What happens with your lungs is that those areas that are essentially damaged, that are obstructed, and if you get oxy oxygen is not going to those obstructed areas, what your lungs tend to do is shut down those areas by vasoconstricting the arteries and making sure that most of your blood is going to the well-ventilated areas of your lung, the areas that are not damaged. This means that when you're breathing in air, you're using it much more efficiently. Air is going to those places of your lung that are still functioning properly. And now the majority of the blood is going to those well-functioning areas so you can get the most gas to blood exchange as you can for the rest of your body. But what happens if I give you more oxygen? Supplementary oxygen through a face mask. What's gonna happen now is that now oxygen is going equally to each area, the good and the bad parts of the lung. And now the bad parts of the lung, um, because they weren't well ventilated before, but now they are, they're actually gonna vasodilate those areas of those arteries. Now, instead of the blood going efficiently to those um, good areas of your lung, they're now gonna be split between 50% going to the good area of your lung and now 50% going to the bad area of the lung. So. If blood goes to the bad area of your lung that is already obstructed, that's not going to work very well. The blood's going there, but the oxygen isn't really being perfused there properly because it's obstructed. So now you're in a worse situation because I gave you oxygen. So that's going to lead to CO2 retention as well. Now, that's one way. Another way is that when you have COPD, you're chronically trying to get oxygen in and you're always at a lack of oxygen. So you're essentially hypoxic most of the time. So you can think of when you climb a really tall mountain, the air gets thinner and you have less oxygen from the atmosphere. And you're essentially in the same way hypoxic that a COPD patient is. Now, what actually happens in this hypoxic state, whether it's induced by climbing Mount Everest or being uh, having COPD, is that your blood, your red blood cells change in physiology a bit. They increase affinity uh, for CO2. We know red blood cells can grab onto oxygen from the lungs. They carry it to your body, release oxygen, take the bad CO2 from the rest of your cells, and then deposit it at the lungs so we can re-breathe it out. So if you have hypoxia, you wanna get that CO2 out. So the red blood cells actually increase the affinity for CO2.
So they can rip out all the CO2 from the rest of your body and really exhale it out. But now what happens if I give you oxygen all of a sudden? Your red blood cells were maintaining low CO2 in your body by having red blood cells increase the affinity for CO2. So now if I give you oxygen, the affinity for CO2 is going to go down because now you have so much oxygen, you're going to have affinity for uh, oxygen. The red blood cells are going to like oxygen more than CO2. So now when the red blood cells are going to go down to the rest of your cells, they're not going to be picking up as much CO2 as they could have been before. And this is going to be another way that's going to lead to CO2 retention. Now, the last way that this oxygen, giving oxygen, can lead to CO2 retention is a very simple way. I said before that the patient came in really short of breath. And when you're short of breath, you're taking short breaths and really uh, like <gasps> your respiration rate increases quite a bit. So COPD patients have really high respiratory rates. This means that they're trying to get in oxygen, but also get out CO2. And um, because they're getting out CO2, they have metabolic alkalosis um, based on the physiology of that. But this means that they're able to get the CO2 out because they're compensating, right? They're not getting oxygen in. They're, they're trying to compensate for the increased CO2 in their body. So they're trying to exhale more as well. But now if I give you oxygen all of a sudden, what's going to happen is that your body says, hey, man, I'm actually getting the oxygen that I need. So you can slow down your respiratory rate right now. So you're getting the oxygen you need. You don't need as many inhales, so you don't exhale as much. But your CO2 is still high for the past two reasons that I gave you. So now you're not exhaling the excess amount of CO2 and it's being built up your system. Now, from these three ways that I told you, the first one being hypoxic vasoconstriction in your lungs now being vasodilated. The second one being your red blood cell affinity for CO2 going down. And now your third way, your respiratory rate decreasing, uh, decreasing the amount of exhaling breaths, increasing the amount of CO2 in your body. This all leads to more CO2 in your body. Now, how do we link increased amounts of CO2 to seizures? How do we get this link? Well, what happens in your cerebral physiology is that increased pressures, arterial pressures, PaCO2, basically vasodilates the brain vessels. Well, why is this? Well, if your body thinks that you have a lot of PaCO2, you by definition don't have a lot of oxygen. So it wants to perfuse the brain with oxygen because as soon as your brain shuts off, you don't know what you're doing and you're basically dead. So it makes sure that all the CO2, if it's really high, it's trying not to be in the brain. So you vasodilate so most of your oxygen can get to your brain, you can do what you gotta do. So if you have high PaCO2 because it's being retained for those three reasons that I said, because I gave you oxygen, your cerebral vessels are going to vasodilate. Oxygen is going to be pumped up to your brain. Oxygen causes energy, ATP, to be released because, you know, through the mitochondrial electron transfer chain. In the end, it causes glutamate, a uh, neurotransmitter, to be released and cause more brain function. And this is a misalignment of brain function. And this glutamate that's released in excess causes neurons to fire, fire, fire in random sequences that it shouldn't be, which can cause a seizure. So in the end, we learned that because I gave you oxygen and this person had COPD, this caused PaCO2 to increase because you were increasing CO2 retention. This caused glutamate to be released in your brain, causing your seizure. So what are you supposed to do for a patient with COPD? You're not supposed to give them oxygen? Well, you are supposed to give them oxygen, but you're not supposed to give them the regular um, oxygen, full oxygen. You're supposed to keep them partial. So usually if someone comes in with asthma or something reversible, you give them 100% saturation. That's what you should keep them on. But because their lungs are damaged and they have COPD, the goal you want to keep them on for saturation 
of O2 is actually 90 to 93 percent because that's a good balance between becoming preventing becoming hypoxic and preventing all this nonsense of CO2 retention in COPD.